Yeah. We're live. Two seconds. Excellent. And actually, we're always live long before we actually know we are. So. I know. I've seen that. So hey, everybody. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live on Monday afternoon. Everything petite blue today. And actually, we're always live long before we actually know we are. So. I know. All right, you are live, definitely. Now, how is the sound with all the fermentation going on behind us? And that may be too loud. Yeah, let's see. Let me see. I don't hear it yet. Do we have sound? Yeah, I hear Bob. Yeah, it sounds good. 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 Excellent. I turned it down here, so I did. That's why we don't have it here. Okay. So I disconnected the bubbler right now, temporarily. So a little extra CO2. Everything petite blue. Everything petite blue. Woo. And I think, um, you know, we usually wait a few minutes for other folks to join us. We do this every Monday afternoon at four o'clock for those of you who are joining us for the first time. Bob and Chuck and I, Ken, um, are in the winemaking area of Hermit Woods Winery in downtown Meredith. And um, how long do you like to, to wait to have? I think we should meetings? give a couple minutes, maybe uh, you know, two, three minutes. Okay. What can we talk about? Let's see. We've got, uh, it's a new year. It's it not is. 2020 anymore, thank goodness. I'm tired of talking about 2020. 2021 is going to be a better year, although there were some great things that happened in 2020, yes. for sure. Sorry. Everybody's always dissing that, dissing that year, but um, we learned a lot of new things. This this is all new. This, this Coming to you live every Monday right. is, is, is a new thing. This has been fun and exciting. Um, we've learned a lot. We've grown a lot. Our business has, I think, gotten stronger because... I think because we've been this. drinking more together. I've so definitely drank with this I, pandemic, I, don't you think? Sort of in general, as a rule. <laughs> well, in general, but also specifically on Mondays at yes. 4 o'clock. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Wolfgang and others have tried in just to see us drinking together. Yeah, yeah I know. I am seeing a pattern here, like Monday <laughs> afternoon drinking program. It's not a bad thing. That's not bad. No, it's good. So, I mean, we do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We just don't go live. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I guess there's that, too. So, uh, yeah, and we had some exciting things. What we, uh, we got to discover sailing the Penobscot together. Yes. That was a wild we adventure. And you folks, many of you joined us for that, that crazy adventure of ours. Can you believe and, we uh, went to South Africa? And we went to South year. Africa in 2020. Yes. Right. So, no, I'm not going to write that year off. That was, that was uh, in many ways, a pretty great, exciting year. Great year. Uh, I will be glad when COVID and this pandemic is over. Um, I hope we can, hope we can get there sooner than later. Um, but, uh, until then, we'll we'll keep doing our best, and uh, we hope we, we hope uh, you guys will still make it out to see us once in a while. We'll keep doing everything we can in the tasting room to keep people safe. We're socially distanced. We're we're keeping the place clean as clean as a whistle, and we're doing everything to keep it safe. So so please uh, come see us when you can, and uh, and stay in touch. And if you can't come in, well, you can see us every Monday at four o'clock because we're going to be here yeah. talking about something Hermit Woods, yeah. telling our story and drinking our wine and. And what have you. So today, let's see, we got uh, we got 10 people join us. So it looks like we got a good number of people. Janice Sullivan has joined us. And oh, Maya's on, online here. Great to Amaya see you, Maya. Is. I can't imagine why we're yeah. talking about everything petite blue. Everything petite blue. And yes, she happens to love petite blue. So, <laughs> so, uh, so maybe we should get started. So yes, that's it. Everything petite blue today. Uh, we've got a, a bunch of things. Why don't you go over the variety of things that you've okay, you so, shared with us so today? So the reason I wanted to talk about this uh, today, it's a couple of things. It's really um, prompted by what's in this tank right now. The 21 vintage of Petit Bleu is fermenting right now in this tank and the tank behind it. So this will be both Petit Bleu and Petit Bleu Reserve. They're fermented in slightly different ways. It's actively fermenting in this tank all the way up near the top. Oh, uh, 4,800 pounds of wild Maine blueberries. There's about 300 gallons of water because these little berries have so much skin and intensity. We add some water to end up with a wine that has a wine characteristic similar to a Pinot Noir or a regular red wine that we're used to drinking. Because we dilute the natural sugars that are in the blueberries and they don't have enough sugar to make 12 or 13% alcohol. Although, 
This year. Yeah, I get that. Yes. Oh, I get that. Yes. So right. I'll let you keep going. So the, the third component that's in here um, is sugar. So there's a lot of sugar in there. Dextrose, which is a, a corn sugar derivative that yeast convert into alcohol. Mm. And so that process of fermentation, the yeast are in there eating up the sugars, pulling all the nutrients and color out of it. And what I want to do is we'll start. Let's go from young to old. Okay, so we have many years here. Let's start off with a sample of this wine as it ferments. So well, everybody should know, just what, a week ago, this represented five pallets of yes. petite blue in 30 pound boxes. Five pallets yes. were, were sitting in this room. Three, 320 boxes. 320 boxes all had to get put into this tank and, uh, and then warmed up, right? Yep. Because it was the, the blueberries frozen. come frozen. And these blueberries, oh my God, these blueberries, what was, you said 16 bricks? So one portion of the boxes that we got yep. were have a bricks of 16.2 and another section of it had a bricks of 17. Oh my God. And it was amazing. Extremely high sugar You content. would eat these frozen blueberries, it was like eating a blueberry popsicle. It was, it was so amazing. They were so sweet and delicious. I couldn't stop eating them until, until we got them in the tank. I just kept mowing on. When, when we're loading the tank up with blueberries, Melanie and I are dumping the blueberries in there. We're, You're just eating my, them. My hands are totally staying yeah. purple. From, How can you not? Purple. They were so good. So normally a blueberry is what? How many bricks are the, the over-the-counter blueberry? Maybe 10 to 12. Okay. And good season for uh, wild berries in Maine, maybe 12 or 13. And typically... With these wild berries, the grade A berries come in at around 12 to 13 bricks. They've gone as high as 14. Okay. So this so last year, 2020, 2020. Another good thing about 2020. Another good thing about 2020. <laughs> not so much good for the growers because it's a lot of picking yeah. for not much result. Right, right, right. But winemakers benefit and people that work with the fruit. So, because... so speaking of the growers, let's sort of plug in. Um, Todd Merrill yeah. is the owner of Merrill's Wild Blueberry in, uh, in Ellsworth, Maine. In Ellsworth. Third he, generation. Third generation. He's one of the smaller blueberry producers producing about 8 million pounds of blueberries. And yes, one of the smaller producers of wild blueberries in, in Maine. And uh, he's worked with us since the day we started making wine back in 2011. Uh, with our first shipment and he has been absolutely wonderful we've been out to visit him he's taught us about blueberries he's, he's taken us through his his, yep. his uh, operation to show us how he how we harvest so uh, shout out to todd todd merrill and uh cheers to everybody happy cheers. new year and uh this wine is a week old kombucha yeah yeah so we yeah, it's, it's, it's it's alive it's alive oh you can smell the yeast yes yeast, yeast, yeah, it's got yeast. some cloudiness very cloudy very thick. It's very sweet. Mm. There's a lot of sugar in there. Not only the sugar that we've added, but the sugar that's naturally occurring in the fruit. Oh, so nice. it's like a really yummy fruit juice. It's fun, <laughs> I know. So uh, hey, hey, so so Eli's joined us. Excellent. Cheers, Eli and uh, and Chelsea. Thank you, Chelsea, for joining us this afternoon. Yes. So what's interesting here, I think that that we can go through, Bob and Chuck and I. This tastes like blueberry juice. Mm -hmm. This tastes like oh, yeah. blueberries, like as if you just took a bunch of blueberries and, and ate them. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna go through here is up to eight years of aging of this wine. That's gonna be and fascinating. That's really to gonna see. be interesting to from, taste how that evolves. From 2020 21. to 2021 to 2012. No, this would be a this is 21. This is 21. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You this made is it. the 21 vintage. Wow. From and that's from 12. From 12. So nine years. Nine years. And um, what I think is really fun and interesting about wine, the fermentation process only takes a couple of weeks. That's how long it takes for the yeast to chew through all those sugars. And, and at that point, it's one. But it's still extremely young. It takes at least six months or so for it to really mature and become what we would recognize as a wine, a young one. And um, what we have is our youngest um, product in, in a can. So it's been about a month Is now. our 20 Petite Blue. This was made in March of 20. Okay. So this is eight, 
eight months old, okay. nine months old. Yep. Um, and this was just canned a week and a half ago. <laughs> wow. So, so let's try a petite blue. This is the 20, 2020. Bit. I'm going to wish we had more glasses so we could do side by side. You know, when we get, I can get some more. We might want to get more glasses. Want to so say hi, is, to, hi to Matt. Matt just joined us. Hi, Matt. So tell us about this packaging, Bob. Yeah, so so really excited. You probably some of you have been on and heard this before, but for those who have not, um, Deb Lucky created all of our, our designs on our cider bottles. Uh, she did the four different ciders that we've had for the last three or four years. And uh, in the, and she's a children's book artist who writes children's books. She has a, a series called The Lunch Witch. If you if you happen to see it, it's a great story. I believe it's being made into a movie or a, a an animated film, which she's working on. That's been delayed again because of 2020. But anyway, Deb's a great artist and, and, and a friend, and she's done a fabulous job. She's just, we hired her to, to do all of our designs for our can. And she came up with this design for our Petite Blue. And at first, the three of us were like, well, I don't know. Really? A screaming baby? A screaming baby. Yeah, crying. Was crying. Yeah. Playing yeah, a tuba. Yeah. yeah, she yeah. had one that said wine, W-H-I-N-E. Yes. Yeah, 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 See, yeah. the little baby was uh, whining. The petite. Yeah. But I'm, a little bears. I'm glad to say uh, Deb is a professional here when it comes to the art. Right. And, right. Uh, and she talked us into going with this design. I'm very pleased that we did. Um, and I, I shared it around the tasting room, kind of did a, an informal poll, and, and clearly everybody loved it. So uh, I think Deb was right. So uh, thank you, Deb, for, for that. What's for that the significance paper. of the tuba? Um, well, that's a, that's a funny you should ask. <laughs> you probably, some of you know this already, but you know, one really exciting thing about 21 is, is that our third floor is likely going to be complete in 21. I'd say likely, because I'm afraid to say it's going to be complete. But um, when it's complete, our third floor is going to be a listening room. We're going to be, uh, we're going to have a music venue. Music. So excited. We have a grand piano, a concert grand piano that's going in. And we're going to put on music shows on the third floor. I can't wait. That's going to be so much fun. Then we're going to be eating, drinking, and sitting around listening to music. We're going to go anywhere. So, uh, so that's that's why the the tuba is sort of apropos. It's uh, suggestive now, of the future here. Let's go before 2012 for a minute. Okay. I want to walk back to when you showed up at my house with a bucket of blueberries. Yes. In 2007 or something like that. Tell me what what was this all about? Oh yeah, that goes back to the the days of the 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 wine club. We had our monthly wine uh, competition uh, evaluation learning group. We had what, maybe 20 people at the, at, the, at the peak of it. Yeah. And we've had a, a wine tasting at my house. I don't remember what the wine was, but Bob had brought a bottle of blueberry wine from Vermont somewhere as a surprise. Yeah. And we didn't know what it was, and we all had to guess. And I don't know that anybody guessed that it was I don't think so. You poured that around. We we were yeah. tasting a red wine that night, and, and you brought that out to, to sample, and we couldn't guess it, but we were all really pleased with it. It yeah. was fascinating. It was it was rich. It was flavorful. It did all the things that a red wine yep. does. But as you told us in the end, it, it was made out of blueberries. blueberries. Great. But the place still exists. I'm sorry, I don't know the name. I should get the name so that if uh, if anybody has a chance to visit them, they're just south. They're on the on the border at the, the western side of Vermont, just south of Sherbrooke, about half an hour south of Sherbrooke. Um, if you if you look Googled around, I'm sure you'd find them. But uh, they make they make fabulous wine, and I'm really glad that uh, we got introduced to them because because after that, Chuck was so inspired. Yeah. So uh, our neighbor has a high bush blueberry farm, and um, my wife uh, Liz and I were invited to go picking, and we just, it has so many berries. We picked and picked and picked, and the light bulb went on. It's like, well, wait a minute. If, <laughs> if we pick a bunch of, a five gallon bucket of blueberries and take it to Ken's house, he's compelled to make blueberry wine. <laughs> he can't do anything about it. He can't. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, there's, no, there's no way he won't make awesome blueberry wine. So that's what we did. Brought the berries, knocked on Ken's door. Surprise. But just, Truth be told, I did not make awesome wine out of those berries. Uh, it took me years. Those first few batches of blueberry wine 
were really terrible. They were hollow. They didn't have fruitiness. I'm sorry. I, 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 I submit is that the that the tide has changed. But but it has yeah. helped us get to where we are. Well, and so that's the perspective. The biggest yeah. the biggest difference really was you were working with high bush, which are much larger and a lot more water. But but just not the flavor. Yeah, but I think I could make a better blueberry wine now. Oh, than I, could. <laughs> I have no <laughs> doubt. I have no doubt. But, yeah, but that, I think Google was involved with the recipe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but blueberry, the blueberries obviously make a big difference. Yes, and these little tiny absolutely. wild blueberries yeah. are vastly better suited than those big juicy yeah. Yeah. high bush blueberries. Yeah, those big yeah. ones are. But some of them get quite large. They like do almost yeah. grape size. You know, they have a different shape. Yeah, but they have a skin and then a big juicy center. Yeah, right. And the skin has all the flavor, right. all the anthocyanins, all the things that are good for you. And that's why the little tiny wild blueberries are more nutritious. They're more flavorful. They're coveted by people that make yogurt, people that make pies. They just pack so much more intensity into it. Right. And over the years, I kept increasing the concentration of the, the berries. So it's about six pounds per gallon of liquid that we end up losing in the batch of wine. So we end up we end up with a little about a pound and a quarter of blueberries in each bottle. Yeah. So it's uh, it's quite concentrated. Yeah. So so we've just tasted very fresh blueberry juice sort of format. Let's see what nine months of aging does to the wine. So we it finished its fermenting, it stabilized it uh, sat in a stainless steel tank for uh, for those eight or nine months. It had uh, I used some um, oak spirals and oak staves to infuse some oak character to the wine to complement the character of the fruit. Now this doesn't smell like fruit juice anymore. No, it's changed. Mm. Oh, it sure does. Mm. I smell some ethanol. There's some, there's some yep. ethanol that yep. comes up. You get, you get fruitiness. But there, it has its own unique dark. signature. Yeah. Um, hmm. And there's, there's a, there's some darker fruit, uh, like, like other berries. Other berries. Yeah. Yeah. There's almost some licorice smokiness. Yes. Yeah. That's a good idea, Chuck. Going back, I must get some smokiness in this now that you suggest. Well, remember, this has a little bit of that bacon. Remember, yeah. early on, oh, you yeah, said, Ken, yeah. how'd you get bacon yeah, in the wine? Yeah. Like, I don't want bacon in the wine. He's like, No, it smells good. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> that's, remember that? That's that was in the basement. You're making maple blues. And that so, was with maple blues. So it, was a, it was a breakfast all in the, in the last bacon. So, gentlemen, uh, our mm. fine folks of the deli here uh, prepared us some nice. Nice food to share with our wine, so we can do some some tasting with uh, with these blueberries. Um, that's a piece of cheese. Cheddar is cheese. It? That's it's a cheddar. A cheddar out of Vermont, and uh, we have some some salami and some crusty bread, some crackers. So uh, oh, so look, she put some dried blueberries on here. Have you had those before? Mmm. You know that was. I wanted to look in. I've got to talk to Deb and find out where she got those. Because I wanted to see about how to pack more into my deep blue, yeah. which is pure yeah, blueberries. Yeah. And one of the techniques in making high powered red wines, it's done in Italy, it's done in Spain, it's done in California, is to dry out, desiccate some of the grapes to concentrate all the flavor. Remember You're that? Basically, fermenting raisins. Mm -hmm. Remember that guy we visited in Canada? He has a winery in Canada and he had. All of his grapes, on, he had racks in his wine cellar with hay on them. Oh, for drying the, the he grapes? He had all of his grapes. He harvested the grapes and then he spread them out on top of the hay. And the hay, I think, was to manage the moisture so that yep. we wouldn't get the mold. mold. And, uh, and he had racks and racks of this. And he was going to be making I've seen these straw slats that are done in, in Spain and Portugal where they, where they dry out. Have you ever seen that no. over there? No, I have not seen it. No, I've only tried. I know in Italy that the, the, they were talking about that, but I have not seen it. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. It seems like there's so much more to always explore in this business of, of making. Yeah, I think wine. we're going to end up drinking a lot. You know, we just need to keep sampling and keep trying new things, right? I think, you know, this wine has some of the acid profile of a white wine. And it makes it much more amenable to a wide range of foods. Mm. It still has that tannic character, and that needs to be 
balanced with oils and fats and things like that. What happened with the dried blueberries? What do you think? You know, I didn't, I didn't connect that with the wine. Those taste like raisins. I know, well. <laughs> They're like grape raisins. Right. They don't taste like blueberries. They're blueberries. They look like blueberries. I get the. Oh, yeah. I get it when I really macerate it a lot in my mouth. Yep. I can finally pull some of that out. Oh, yeah. So I bet if I could, oh, yeah. if I could get a bunch of those and add those to a bunch of <coughs> wild blueberries, could make an even more concentrated deep blue. Really, really chew on those, and then rinse, chew some wine in with it, and it's it's really cool. I get that little soury. I get the no. I do too. After yeah. chewing that, I yeah. smell it. I taste the sour yeah. note. Yeah, more yeah. so in the wine. Yeah, uh -oh. it's like that, that that candy that. Mm -hmm. uh, of the sour. So the other, the other interesting thing to me in this comparison uh -oh. of, of technical difficulty. Technical difficulty. Are we still on? I still see us. On okay, this, but there's a delay here, so we don't know whether we're here or we're not here. Existence. We might not be here, folks. We, we may not. Oh, we'll keep. Oh no, we're still can. good. We're still, still good. good. Right, we're back. Well, I was going to steal. <laughs> <laughs> we drank all the wine in the time we were gone. Let me. Uh, is that the sweet of the fermenting? Uh, of um, blueberry wine is uh, got all of that sugar that's going to turn into alcohol, and mm -hmm. all it's all that stuff is still there. It's just changed form by a molecule, basically, right, and given off CO two gas in, in exchange for it. So we have the alcohol is what's juxtaposed to the blueberry flavor, and so we instead of having a sweetness bringing out that flavor. We have that propellant that, that alcohol is, that's kind of doing the same thing. Like about right. propellant. Yeah, and it's it makes it. Um, it's almost like candy for adults. You know, it's just it's just a it's just a. There you go again. <laughs> you talking about the goodness of alcohol? <laughs> no, it's just more sophisticated. It brings out a lot more. See, it's more sophisticated. And brings this stuff out. <laughs> Okay. I love you, you what do you, you think great. out there? Am I full of, <laughs> or am I making a good point about the deliciousness and the and the, the greatness that the alcohol brings to a fermented? I agree 100%. With you. I'm not <laughs> you, <laughs> you keep talking to I'm going to have more alcohol. Isn't, isn't it amazing how that transformation, while your in fermentation, ends up with something that's so different? I can remember that the very first time when we drove down in the van to Boston and we bought some wine grapes. In 06, when we when first time we were making wine from scratch from California wine grapes. That wasn't just any van. That was and a love mobile. That was a love mobile. That was a love mobile. And um, they had some mold on them, but the ones that didn't have the mold, and you could taste them. It's it's a grape. You're eating a grape. It has a seed in it. Yes. It's got lots of flavor, but it doesn't taste like Sangiovese wine. It doesn't taste like Chianti at all. It's no. it tastes like a grape. Sweet. Incredibly it's sweet. super sweet, unbelievable. When you eat like a, a table grape that you buy in the supermarket, you're coming that's, in at that's about so, so sweet. 17 bricks or so. Yeah, wine grape, you're 24, yeah. 25, 26 bricks. It is so sweet, yeah. like eating a really yeah. intense candy. Um, I'm gonna yeah. grab a couple more glasses so that we can do some side some by side. 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 Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, where are we gonna go next? I wonder what we're going to do. The, uh, these, these are barrels. You got these out of the barrel, right? Um, and then we have yeah. a, a reserve mm -hmm. and an uh, 18 petite blue, I think, and our 12. What's it? What are these again? Uh, that's next. Okay. So these two samples are taken out of barrels. Okay. Back. So these are wines that are still aging. What's different about them? They're different. Yeah, let's see. So I'm going to start with this one. This is called 20 Blue. This isn't a wine that's released on its own. This never gets bottled as it is. This is a critical component in our Hermitage. So it's aging away. It's crafted. I started working down the line after our trip to California. And I was going to say. About making that intense blue note blue note sort of concept but it's been side railed for a little while into hermitage yeah. it's helping me understand 
what I'm trying to do here is to make a bigger, richer, jammier wine out of the blueberries. And I'm using that to create a bigger, richer Hermitage. So the 19 blue note went into our 19 Hermitage. Okay. Um, no, where did that go? I don't know where that went. Huh. But I know it's not there. It's anymore. somewhere. It's somewhere. <laughs> it may have gone into our 19 Petit Blue Reserve. So, okay. Nonetheless, uh, just a little side story there. Uh, that idea was born when we were, remember, we were sitting around the, uh, that, that barbecue place in Napa. Yes, that was with, uh, what was it called? Uh, yeah. Uh, so Bounty. Bounty. Oh, Bounty. oh, the Bounty, Bounty Hunter. Hunter. Bounty Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, what yeah. was the gentleman's name who we were with? Yeah, you remember his name? On, yeah, so Lee, Lee. Lee, yes, Lee Renziger. Wow. Yes. And, uh, and Lee was sharing with us some absolutely mind blowing so yeah. Napa cabs and, and uh, Napa. Total wine. West Coast, total, just, yeah. just, just opulent, just rich, velvety, oh, over the yeah. top yeah. stuff. Yeah. And we were sharing our wines with Lee, and he was he was very impressed, and, and he he inspired us to to explore how we might take some of our wines to this this new level, to that big fruity, juicy, you know, uh, fruit bomb, if you will, that that, uh, that that some some of the California wines are, mm -hmm. and uh, and so that's what inspired Blue Note. And uh, look at the color difference. Oh, it's huge. So is this 100% blueberry or is there still yes, water? 100% blueberry. Ah, so there oh, no. Be. No, there is some water. There is, okay. I think it's um, eight or nine pounds of blueberries per gallon of, of Well, there's your color water. difference right there. Big color difference. There you go. Um, the fermentation process is different. And then uh, extensive barrel aging. And what year is this? This is 20, so this is a new one. Hmm. Hmm. You're getting a little more smoke and very secondary good. aromas yeah. from, the, from the oak. Oh, it's hard to even compare them. They're, they're so different. Well, this, I haven't done this before. Yeah. This, these, this, these. So these are both 20 vintages. Yeah. So these are both made at the beginning of, of last year, but obviously much different ones. Yeah. yeah. I like where this is going. Yeah. Still, still uh, similar acidity. Yes, you still have that that full acid bite tanginess to to the wine. Um, I don't do a lot of uh, buffering of that with with carbonate or or other additives. I want to see at these early stages to see what's what's in the fruit itself. Gunnar has joined us, and Gunnar comments that he thinks currants. Not elderberries might be the ideal secondary fruit. So he's, I think he's really, we must be referring to your Hermitage recipe. Um, mm. Well, we Hermitage black is, currants. Yes. Currants, yes. right. Black, black currants, yeah. elderberries, right. and blueberries, yes. and uh, blackberries. Right. No, yes, right? What is that? Those, those yep. four, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I'm not sure what he's referencing. Maybe you could clarify. Um, there are no currants or elderberries in this wine. This is Correct. These are blueberry. these are straight straight blueberry vintages. Yep. Today it's all 100% blueberries that we're that we're dealing with, just for the comparison. So this is working basically with the same fruit but different vintage uh, approaches. The the crafting of the wine, if you will. Of course, there's a little difference um, in the berries. In early 20, when I sourced the berries for these, it was from the 2019 harvest. They're, they're frozen, they're picked at peak ripeness, they're sorted, and then frozen, deep frozen at uh, Todd Merrill's facility. So the new vintage that we're tasting out of 21 are the, is the 20 uh, vintages. Oh, I got one more to try. Uh oh, we lost them again. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, Chuck, you gotta try this. This cheddar? No, oh. this, this is a truffle mm. salami. Never no, to truffle salami. no I've never had it before. Oh, I can it's, smell it's the truffle. Brand new to the deli. Mm. And then if you can bite into one of those peppercorns while the blue is in your mouth, okay. it's magical. The, the acidity and, the, and the, 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 the tartness of that peppercorn or the spiciness of that peppercorn 
In your mouth. Mm. Very good. So this is in tank. This is the second blueberry wine, Petite Blue, of 2020, but made with 2020 blueberries. How do you keep track of all this? <laughs> I obviously don't at times when you're just asking me about where's that the 19 blue note. I'm like, I don't know where it is. I, I do have I have it in the system. I, I can find it. But this will be interesting. So this is. So let me clarify. So this is this, the, this is the petite blue that's been canned. It's ready for consumption. Yeah, that's that's our, this. This is the first. We did two vintages of petite blue in 2020. The first one, which is already in cans, is um, made from 2019 berries. Okay. The second one is made with 2020. Everybody's head spinning right now. I, my, my head is spinning too. <laughs> so this is the only difference between that and this is the 2020 versus 2019. Right. Right. So these are the higher bricks there. So these are the higher bricks there. Well, that should be it. If I remember correctly. So I want to have these side by side. So, so while you're away, we did an experiment with the blue, which is it's it's very rich, heavy, uh, mechanic. Try it. No, no. Try it with, the, with, with this. Of actual peppercorn that's in a uh, salami with a truffle. And I've oh, never had anything wow. with a peppercorn oh, that wow, makes amazing everything. Salami. Yeah, it's made in salami. And it's got the peppercorn bitiness and maybe smokiness of the of the um, of the truffle oil really, really well with that with the wine that it, it by itself is kind of hard to drink because it's just it's just singular and heavy and tannic and and everything. It's not as easy drinking as the petite blue by any by any stretch of imagination, but with the food, it just just took off. It was I'm eating off grains. Oh, it's alcohol. Huh. Huh. So food. This is a different wine altogether. The, so all that's different about this is the different year berries. Yeah. Because from the the nineteen berries to the twenty, even the color. Yeah. It's a richer color. Yeah. It's amazing. This is younger too, right? And it's younger because it's. Months younger. Months younger, yeah. Six, seven months. Younger. And this is going to turn into our petite blue in the bottle. Correct. Okay. Four more cans if we Four more cans if we need them. <laughs> this is more like petite blue reserve. It's starting to it's it's getting into that territory. Yeah. It's got a lot of tannins. It's got it's got some nice body. It's really yeah, I I love it. When, when that's when these berries came in, when we were able to source from this from 20s harvest. And the bricks were 16 or 17. I'm like, oh my it's goodness, this is going to be the best vintage ever of Petit Bleu. So these are also 2020 berries, hmm. even though it's 21 vintage. Oh. And this is going to be both Petit Bleu and Petit Bleu Reserve. Oh. Mm. So I'm very excited about that. So well, this is, is this fascinating. Is, We've just been through three, and they're all over. Yeah, we just, yeah. we just started. We just started. We just started here. So we're talking about very young wines. And the differences of the year of the berries, 2019 versus 2020, of the harvest of that year. And just like grapes, I mean, you know, this you go to Burgundy and you're, you're looking at those wines and you're, you know, you, you can see the price difference. You yeah. know, for 2005, 2006, 2007. Five and seven are pitching 125 bucks a bottle. For 2006, which was a crappy year, yeah. they're selling it for 40 bucks a bottle. And it's just because of the conditions that were going on there. And so when we get, when these berries came in from 20, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is great. And I contacted Todd and said, you know, how many, how many can we set aside we to get, make yeah. sure that, that we have enough to make all of this? Does that mean we can sell it for $60 a bottle? That's the uh, marketing side. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> really? That's the man side. That's so, the so Gunnar clarified. And Gunnar says, Great. I think blueberries need an adjunct during fermentation to add depth and body. It's interesting. So Gunnar brings up an interesting point. So there's two different, different ways. Who's Gunnar? Yes. Let's tell everybody who Gunnar is. Because nobody well, knows. Go ahead. Gunnar. Give me the, 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 the full line. So Gunnar, Gunnar is a winemaker as well. Gunnar is up in Sandwich. And he has a, a winery of his own. And, and oh, I'm going to feel terrible. I don't know the, the name of his winery. I'm so sorry, Gunnar. We will we'll yeah, get that he'll, correct. He'll put it up. And yeah, put it up and we'll put it out to the world. But uh, 
Uh, so he's a what well, I mean we've known Gunnar since the beginning. Right. We've right. Been, uh, so so it's interesting, Gunnar, because I've done it both ways where you're working with one or two or more fruits together. And you can either ferment them separately and then blend it after, or you can co-ferment them, mix them beforehand, and you get different results. So there's different kinetics and dynamics that happen in the fermentation vessel. And black currants are a fascinating fruit. They, they add the French poem cassis, and a lot of uh, rich, dark red wines like Cabernet, Zinfandel, have notes of cassis. Yeah. You know, we, we've talked about this before. Yeah. Wine grapes that produce our red wines, we often describe them in terms of fruit. <laughs> You know, we, we talk about the strawberry, we talk about the blueberry notes, we talk about the, the blackberry notes or the cassis notes. And we just start so, with the fruit. Right, and we just start with the, with the fruit. The, the challenge with black currants is they're extremely high acid. So they change the dynamics chemically as well as from a flavor standpoint. So I've moved in the Hermitage realm to make my blueberry ferments separate and then add the black currant later to help me control the confluence so that I don't overdo it. Mm. But absolutely, small amounts of other materials in the ferment can change the flavors a lot. So many things to try mm. down the road, for sure. That was an amazing sausage with that. With that yeah, the trouble with that pepper, and I, and I agree, it, it, it livened up the wine. And they, they went really well together. Yeah. Yeah, I, that was shocking, but that was a great, a great surprise. Um, and we had a question, Priscilla Merrill asked, should, should you have leftover in a can? What should you do to preserve the flavor? And, and I would quite frankly, it. I would just drink it because yeah. <laughs> there really is no yeah. Yeah. Uh, method or tool designed on the market right now to preserve the liquid in a can. You could, uh, if you poured it off into a separate container that was sized correctly so that you minimize the amount of oxygen in that container, uh, you could you could preserve it. You could hold it together for a day or two. Uh, you know, some but, wines, some wines age can handle a day or two or three. Sure. Open. Open. Open bottle. You know, honestly, you know, honestly. So so if you had half a can of petit bleu, you left it on the counter, you know, if you had fruit I would put it in the put a put a towel over it, put it in the fridge. Because the refrigeration slows down. That will slow it down. Right. But I bet just fine the next day. You know, honestly, honestly, you know, a significant number of people, you probably all know people out there who do this. Uh, my mother is one of the worst offenders, but it, 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 it works for her. And if it works for her, that's all that matters. Um, she frequently buys larger bottles of wine because she gets a better deal on them price wise. And she'll drink a bottle of wine for two, three weeks. It yeah. drives me nuts. I can't imagine yeah. how she can enjoy that same bottle of wine for two or three weeks. But she always looks at me funny and says, I don't know, it's fine for me. Yeah. So if it works for you, it works for you. So really, Priscilla, you should you should try it. Stick a can of stick your can of blueberry in the fridge, and and uh, bring it out a little bit if you want to warm it up before you drink it the next day. And you may find it's just fine. Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, a lot more people than we know, actually do that, and uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. We don't do it here because we're we, you know we want to sell you the precious wine we have, so we want to make sure to, to do that. But but if it's at home, and some wines will hold up. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah well, you may be just better off to buy a bottle and use one of the vacuum sealers right, and, right. and keep the bottle for a, for a week or two, like like your mom. But just when the, when the when the wine volume gets down to a quarter of a bottle, no matter what you do, there's always going to be there's a lot of exposure. You know, before you open that, I was thinking, what about if you jump to the older stuff? Oh, no, got an idea here. Go, right. young. go, I think. go. Sorry, go. So where are we at now? What year are we in? So I want to. I want to have you guys try 2019 and 2020 Petit Blue Reserve side by side. So the 20 Petit so Blue Reserve. Reserves, no, where's the other reserve? That blue one. So we need to finish something in the glass. Then. Which one should we finish? Which should we want to keep up? I need two glasses. Which, should, which one should we keep into the mix for side by side? I don't know. I, I, did some alcohol abuse and I just dumped it in a beaker. Oh wow! Slam it on. What up? Duh. Well, you can always drink it later. <laughs> you can always drink it later. <laughs> you put it back in the. Oh no, this is nineteen and nineteen. 19. So, uh, uh, 
Priscilla asked what the significance was of the baby. Well, uh, petite Lou, petite, petite, tiny, tiny, small baby. And the tuba is about the music venue that we're creating on our third floor. We're going to have live music every week here at, at Hermit Woods Winery. So uh, that's sort of foretelling the future. So Petit Blue playing the tuba and blasting a blueberry out the end of it. Mm -hmm. I had two glasses. Oh, boy. I better go here. OK, on the right, no, I'll have your two glasses. You, you made that suggestion already. I did, yeah. On the right is what's in bottle. It's our 2019 Petit Blue. Petit Blue, not reserve. Sorry, Petit Blue Reserve. Okay. So in the in the right glass that you have is our 2019 Petit Blue Reserve. Okay. This was fermented in 19, bottled about a year later, uh, spent many many months in oak barrels. Yep. I didn't bottle all of it. I saved some of it. Okay. And that's going to go into our 2019 Hermitage. Wow, it is confusing. So it's getting quite confusing. Yeah. I'm playing around with different things. So what's interesting here is it's basically the same wine, except this one has, it is the exact same wine, except this one has been in bottle aging for about five months. And this has been retained in a barrel. Wow. All right. I haven't done this. Yeah. So, so you don't know what this is. This is really fun. It's retained in an oak barrel. French oak barrel. French oak barrel. French oak barrel. I have two French yeah, oak barrels of Petit Blue Reserve. I can smell the barrel. Oh, I smell the barrel in, in, in both of them. I, I, that's, so the one on the right I love it. is your, the one that's bottled, our Petit Blue Reserve from 2019. Oh, they're entirely different. They're a lot different. Wow. The color's exactly Oh, what is, that, what is that difference, though? Can you describe it? So there's a little So I get of, more barrel on the, on the younger bit, one. Yeah, there's I mean, a little bit on the bottle. Well, I, I'm the opposite. I get, I get there's the a little bit of oxidation that's going on. There's a little bit of volatile acidity oh. that's showing up. In which one? The one that's still in the barrel, the one out of the beaker, the one on the left. Oh, boy, this 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 uh, 19 reserve though. This is nice. Oh my god. That is really good. So what I like in flirting a little bit with the oxidation in barrels is it reminds me of French wines, old yellow yeah. wines. Yeah. Right? They, they start to develop, some of them will have quite a bit of volatile acidity and some of these oxidized notes yeah. that mm. can somewhat make a, a more closed wine. Yeah. It's a little less new world jammy fruitiness, a little less pleasing up front, but it provides a more interesting wine to me. And so that's that's what's happening here. And that's this is going to be this is going to go into our hermitage. Yeah. Does it I, I, that that uh, volatile acidity that you're talking about? Is that a concern? Is that is that something you well, you're able to get control you're, of that? You're flirting with, with, yeah. with problems. I know. That's what so, I'm asking. So, <laughs> you're flirting with it. Are you going to get married? <laughs> Are you going to? <laughs> I'm going to marry it soon. <laughs> I think so uh, that, I so think it'll be great. it'll be coming out of the barrel soon, and um, it will be filtered actually to take care of that volatile acidity so it doesn't compete. Okay. And uh, stabilize. Probably sooner than later. <laughs> so that um, so you don't care for the level that it's in. You have to realize this is going to be it's going to blend about one third or. Okay, that's four, that's going to make a big difference. A four two-fifths of the Hermitage. Hmm. No. So I'm, you know, this isn't a singular thing. So, so that's that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm playing with here, Bob. So you know so, what's going on. So the Petit Blue Reserve went into bottle at the time that I wanted to go into bottle to be the Petit Blue Reserve. It's balanced, it's smooth, it's fruit, it's got the oak character, it's got the dryness, it's a bigger, richer wine than our regular Petit Blue. And the stuff I kept in barrel is, Flirting on that. So, so here's here's what here's my side. here's my well. Now I'm, I, I'm thinking about it in a couple of things after tasting it a couple of times. Um, I, you're right. The the volatile acidity on the nose I think is is too high right now. But of course, when you blend it in and and you know it's a long way from being finished, so that's fine. The taste on this, I totally get where you're going. The taste on this is much more starts to be more European. Mm. This is yeah. this is fruitier. This is bigger. This is younger. Younger, yeah. Fresher. This is starting to, to approach what Provence, a lot of southern yeah. southern French Pro Provence, Languedoc, that kind of character. 
and and I guess that volatile city is helping helping you get there. Right. And because uh, taste wise, I really think this has got a lot more going on, more interesting. There's more complexity to it, and uh, it's really hard because so who knows, you know, this but this is going to blend it again into another wine altogether. So it right. won't be compared to this wine. Right. right. Then it'll go into Hermitage. Yeah. I paired it with the the world's best blue cheese we get from Vermont. I can't remember what what we Blue called. Hill. Blue Hill. And um, I paired that with the barrel aged, um, more complex, mature, more vanilla, more wood extracts, because the blue cheese has that kind of funk, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And the, the funk and the oh, funk are just, yeah. they're just made, they're just made funk out now. Yeah, oh, yeah. It is, it is. You know, and, it, and I just had it with the other petite blue. It doesn't work at all. It doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. It just yeah. totally competes. Interesting. Yeah. Because this, this, the, the tanginess, the funk of the blue cheese is strong. I swallowed it a moment ago and I can still see out. I still got it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But with that smell yeah. still in my nose and my head, and I sip this old world oxidized yep. wine, yep. this is really nice. Yep. Is. I just had a sip of it while that lingering blue cheese was still in my mouth. I had a sip of the second one. I totally hear what you mean. Yep. But the, you try it with the first one, it's, it's no. yeah, totally work. wrong. But I would, I would say that if I'm, in my first impression of this, I actually prefer the bottled 2019 Petit Blue as a matter of an easy drinking nice wine. No, that's right. and that's what it is. That's that's the goal of that of that. Well, and of and course, once, this isn't finished. This is even in a volume. Right. That's that's going to go blending. Well, that's yeah. you know, what a great. What a and great we story. already know that there's a long path between and the volume. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows? And we a got, lot of it is we got know, some twists and turns. Frankly, it's it's out of my control. I'm. I'm floating down a river with these things, trying to coax them along and shape them, and but they they're doing their own thing. What barrels are breathing a little differently than than the others? Right, right. So I have two barrels of that. It was sampled out of one of the barrels. The other the other barrel will taste different than this one. And then I get blended. But that adds more complexity to the wine. It's like a big Rubik's cube around here. Yeah. <laughs> you have the funnel. I have the Rubik's cube. It is. Yeah, it is. It's a bunch of barrels. That's a good analogy. Okay, so now we're going to do side by side of two other blueberry wines. Just to mess with so it. We're going to go with um, Petite Blue and Petite Blue from different years. So we're going to do 2019 Petite Blue, which will be on your right. right. Twenty nineteen Petit Blue on your right, and twenty twenty Petit Blue on your left. Oh, that can't be as good as in a can. <laughs> or <can> same one, <laughs> same one, different packaging. No, well, no, a different year too, and different year. Yeah, sorry, not the same one at all. I mean, same. It's still it's the same style. Different year. Same stuff. Different year. So the one on the right is 19. Yep. The one on the left is 20. What are the difference in blueberries? The 19 is 2018 blueberries? Oh, uh, now that's just 2019. <laughs> now that's different. I know this is 19 blueberries. Yeah. So that's 19 blueberries too. Uh, You're calling it 2019 to see blue. No, because I don't, I, I mess with that too. Now that I'd have to look up. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's 18 blueberries. Rubik's cube. It's 18 blueberries. <laughs> There's too much going on here. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm. Mm. It's oh, that's coming on nice. I love the way this wine matures. And I agree. Mm -hmm. I like it's that. super smooth. Mm. Right? Mm. Oh, I right can't wait for a couple years in a while. As wines age, they mature, they change. So you 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 raise the wine up and then you bottle it and then it's going to evolve, continue to evolve on its own. And I like the analogy of, of raising kids. You, you get to have quite a bit of input on them and eventually they they, they leave. They're off they go. They're on their own world. But they you, you help start that and they go on and live into a different different place. So what do you think about the difference? 
Um, I, I, well, I, I think that the age, I mean, I, I think that the wines are very similar, mm -hmm. but the, the year difference in age is really right. changing. It's, it, it's softer, it rounds yes. out, it's, it's, it's a nicer wine. I think I can detect a little bit more of the fruit in the, in the 20. In the can, yeah, because it's so young. Yeah, yeah, but that's compared what exactly. to the one that's been in the bottle an extra year. Um, Priscilla asked another interesting question. She said, "Does uh, do you think the extreme drought contributed to the less than stellar taste that you were referring to?" Um, she says she doesn't feel like it was a great year for blueberries. So this is a really fascinating topic. So why don't you shed some light on that? So I actually, if I if I heard the question correctly, she was suggesting that maybe the extreme drought has caused a. a a deficit in the blueberry crop. Right. But they're not as good. Right. So I think it's just the opposite, actually. The drought. At least relative to what? The drought happened to concentrate the flavors. It happened at a time when the plant was mature enough and the berries had formed far enough to where they could ripen under stress and concentrate all their sugars. And that's why the bricks is so high and why the very young wine, the one we had out of the back tank, and this one is so much richer. So it is a better vintage. I think 2020 berries in New England will produce better wines than 1918. Absolutely. So, so a couple yeah. of things, Priscilla. One of the things that the drought has resulted in, those higher bricks that we're refer referring to, those higher bricks are, is, are partly as a result of less water. So Absolutely. there's uh, the concentration of sugar is more intense because there's less water to dilute it. And if you were to look into the, the wine, the grape industry, um, one of the one of the most important things to a successful crop in the world of grapes is lack of rain. Is lack of rain. Yeah. They really want to starve the fruit. And it's really an interesting concept. And you taught me this 10 years ago. But the fruit's job in the world is to produce seeds that will produce more fruit the in vine. the future. The vine's job. The vine's job, right. yes. So, so the vine is trying to produce the most potential out of those seeds. And so if there's a drought, the vine puts all the more energy out of, the, out of its uh, uh, effort into the fruit so that it makes sure that it survives because the vine might not survive. So, so the seed is the only hope. Right. And, and, and it's fascinating because humans have figured this out. It's why we prune trees. It's why we prune our vines. If you, if you leave a wild tree sitting out there, it will produce some fruit. But if you crop it, if you prune it down in the, in the winter, in the early spring, it's going to go, oh my goodness. I just got all my limbs chopped off. I'm going to die. I better make sure I produce really good offspring. Good tasting offspring that will attract birds and other animals to spread the seeds far and wide and keep my lineage going. And then you get this incredible harvest of grapes. So growing wine is a real concept. The people that are pruning their vines are trying to do it in a way where they're working with their local environment in a way to stress the vine, not just to enough, death, not to kill it, but just on the edge of where yeah. they're going to put everything they can into that year's grapes. And then if they get enough sunlight, enough moisture, enough nutrients, up close to where they go through Verizon and start to ripen, and then we get no rain, those sugars will get concentrated and you'll end up with a great vintage. Yeah. So, so it's all about the timing. So, so it's really just the opposite. Drought, if the drought had happened in, in June, we may have had very bad blueberries. Right. But it happened right. later. Right. So it's, it, it's really uh, quite fascinating. And, and I would be interested to know, I'm going to guess that chefs who work with blueberries for blueberry food, items, food items that have blueberries in it. I'm going to guess chefs would agree that this was also a good year because of the sweeter blueberries. If you ate those blueberries with, the, with you know, 17 bricks blueberries, it was just absolutely amazing. So I can't imagine a chef not appreciating that. So, you know, what's interesting, if you can, you guys can recall back, oh, is this a 12? Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. So 2012, that was our year. It happened to be an incredible year for dark berries in New England. I didn't know it at the time. Right. I just really starting to get my head above water and understand some of the dynamics of fruit, harvest times. We got some black currants from 
that organic farm yeah. over in Vermont. Remember yeah. walking through his yeah. fields and all that stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. That went into our 2012 melange, yep. which was superlative. I haven't been able to make a melange like that since. That year was just a fantastic year for concentrating flavors. Everything was right. And so this is a unique situation that you happen to grab a 2012 out of the cellar. You did it on specific, knowing that that was the vintage. I knew year. you were always excited about 2012. Uh, and 2012 was what Ray Isle got to taste when when we were in New York. When we were there. Ah. 2012 put us on the, put Petit Blue on the map. So 2012 was the wine that Ken took to New York City for a for a presentation that was hosted by Ray Isle, the editor of Food and Wine magazine. And Ray, I got a chance to try it amongst dozens of wines he was he's trying. He's been our friend eat. ever since. And he's been a friend <laughs> of us ever since. He's he's uh, he's really uh, treated well. I love well. his post. He's he's an amazing yeah. guy. Really tremendous. Look at the cork. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's good. Eight years. Wow, that's one of the good corks. Too. This is a real treat, Daddy. Mm. Look at 2012. So the uh, I made a comment about the can, and we have no. What we've learned from the can so far is that you can't tell the difference between wine that's stored in the can and wine that's stored in the box. Not at all. Not at all. No. We yeah. find that if you have a can of this petite blue. It's much better, at least at this temperature, this time of year, serving the glass. And it is exactly as it would be if it came out of the bottle, like as near as we can tell from our, our tasting experience. I'm glad you brought that up because I just we just did a side by side of two different years, one in the bottle and one in the I completely forgot I made, I made a side remark about it, so I figured I better I better follow up. That's okay. right. Keep us keep us in line, yeah. It's well, no, and it, it is good because I had forgotten that we were not only comparing two different yeah, years, that's how custom, but two different containers. Are. Yeah, yeah, right. We're comfortable with it. I mean, it didn't take long. This is well. This is we were comparing a can to a gas grill screw cap. Yeah, right. And we've come a long way. Look at the color of this. Yeah. Well, it's dark. Look at how opulent the color is. It's just incredible. Wow. <laughs> it's so dark. Mm. Yeah. It's still it's still bright fruit. It's bright all the way across. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Wait till you smell this. Twelve. Yeah. So this is eight well, years old. Yeah. Fruit Nine fruit. years old. So this it should be spoiled by the standard through which we learned about making fruit wine, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome oh. to the world of spoiled yeah. old fruit wine. Wait, you know, <laughs> I'll never forget when we were told I, this I, is going to change in the glass too as it sits here. As we as we've now this has been trapped in that bottle underneath oh. this cork for nine years, and we just exposed it to air. It's going to evolve while we sit here and swirl. So you better taste it quick, so you know. Holy guacamole! Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. Take me back to twenty twelve. Oh my god! <laughs> That's amazing. This is what I think twenty one is going to be. That's amazing. And that, that's what I'm hoping that they just nine years. Yeah. Nine, gentlemen, nine, nine years. years. Cheers. Nine years. We only been in business for two done. years. That's right. This is amazing. This is this is an amazing one. Oh, it's got all of the things. It's got all of the things that make me just love drinking wine. Yeah. It's so um yeah. What's really interesting about blueberries too, even with uh, a lot of barrel aging or whatever. They never have that full, big tannic grip of a Pinot a Burgundy or a Cabernet or anything like that. It's just, it's just not as big and grippy. But it has all of that richness and softness and engagement. It's extremely complex. There's a lot going on a lot in the nose and the flavor of this. This one. is really amazing. It's really it's rich. I mean, it's, it's all the way rich. through. It's really through all the whole thing. It's just, you know, and I'll never forget. I don't know who it was, and it doesn't matter who it was, but when we were researching opening a winery, one of the winemakers that we met with uh, learned that our, one of our intentions was to lay these wines down and age them. And they said, that's crazy. You don't, you don't age a blueberry wine. You don't age fruit. It's not, it's not heard of, it's not, it's not done. And we've done it and it's, it's absolutely perfect. I love it, you know, and I just talked about that that tannic grip, but this has a really nice tannic finish. 
Yeah, it, it balances the fruit it's perfect. beautifully. Yeah. yeah, try it with some food. Really, I would say try it with this. I tried it. One of those with a blueberry wine. Try that. It's it's a magical. That's Fortuna sa sausage. That's the Fortuna. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Fortuna out of Vermont. It's just fabulous. Try it with that wine. It's so good. I would I would guess that we're in the drink now phase for this wine because we're all having such a great experience. With it's it. right on. Yeah, it's I think right so. on. It could go another five years. It I could. don't know. We we but it's right on. No, there no. Are some. There, I think this is going to start turning. Yeah, there are a couple, a couple years. There are a couple of little raisin notes I yep. get in the aroma, yep. absolutely, which aren't bad, which are good, which I are really making the like complexity. It. I really like it. Too much more of that, and, and you lose the turn. Yeah. You lose the you lose the fruit. You lose yeah. some of the. Yeah, I agree. Some of the older wines out of your cellar. So I need. Great, so great, what you're telling wines. me is that you drink all those 2012 things, Dave? Right now, because they got a bunch of. You do. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know where we're going today? <laughs> I'm going to Bob's cellar. Bob's cellar, right? <laughs> Now that's this is really special. This is wow. really special. And what's amazing, you is, know, I, you know, this is this is really, you know, and I don't know how this this will come across, but in 2012, you were still figuring this shit out. I'm still figuring this shit out. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. No, really. no, no, no. But you have come a long way. I mean, look at all the variations and all the studies that you're doing here. We've talked about all these variations, and so here we are. Uh, you know, eight years beyond this, what this is going to be like in 10 years is going to be mind boggling. Mind boggling. These wines need age, and you've been making them that way ever I, since. I, 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 I like well aged wines. Of course, so, so do so I. I. So I can't help but to try to build something yes. that will do this. That will do this. And that's, I can't wait. You know, just like we were talking about the Hermitage that you created in 10 years, the Red Scare. Oh, yeah. In ten years, oh, yeah. these are wines that need to lay down. You need to put them in the cell. We got to put some more away. I know. Oh, that's been cases. in my head. We have. This is the year to do it. We have some. We have some extra wine in the cellar, so. Big. Delicious. And wow, delicious food. Wow. <clears throat> oh, that is one of the most enjoyable. Oh, that's just that's just right on. It's in the wrong shape bottle. That's just right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, it took us a little while to realize that this was well, no. more Burgundian. And so we went to Burgundy. And it was before we, we were married to our long strip labels. Yeah. It, so, no. we, so we yeah. did that. It, it, had nothing to do with, it had nothing to do with our understanding of the wine and its role in the world. This had to do with we needed to get all of the same size bottles because it's economically the right thing to yeah. do. And all of the same size labels because it's economically yeah. the thing to do. This is before labeling. Yeah, we hand that, we that. Hand -labeled, yeah, we hand labeled that. Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> Are they straight? Come, come, come for a tour, machine. you'll see our machine. <laughs> our hand labeling. Oh, so, my goodness. Wow, so, yeah, gentlemen, we are this time. Well, we're at five o'clock. Okay. So, uh, we let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, how much longer would you 2012 mature? Well, we talked a little bit about that. We suggest that 2012 is is is, is more or less at its peak. Yeah. Maybe another year, and then uh, and then I would I would for sure say it's going to start to turn. Yeah. And it, it might not be. It's right now. So so but now think, is the so time. So I think our petit blue petit blue reserve five to eight years is probably a sweet spot in those wines. So just I don't know if you can hear this. So that's that's Everybody wine being made. That? Oh yeah, it stops. Stop. So that's the CO2 that's being produced in the tank here, and it's it's gassing off uh, and and being released into this bucket of sterile water. They're busy. They're making something that's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Twenty twenty eight. Mm -hmm. So that's the actual representation of yeast producing alcohol right yeah. there. And off gassing CO2. Yeah. That's amazing. There's you know trillions <laughs> of little yeast out there. Oh, yeah. so, so I hope everybody has enjoyed our your time with us today and uh, our exploration of Petit Blue. I've learned more about Petit Blue in the last hour than I've known. Me I too. I, I you know, I love this opportunity to do all of this stuff. So many times I'm I'm dealing with my current vintages, or maybe I've got one or two in tank or barrel that I can cross and examine. 
but doing the spectrum like this and then landing on 2012, when we're talking about 2020 berries, I think this is the next great vintage of the berries. And they're all, they're all good, but they're those exceptional ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's always that, that, that certain yeah. vintage that like 2012 will always be a special vintage for you. And yeah. justifiably. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, That's really so I think we'll bring this to a close. Again, thank you everybody who, who uh, took the opportunity to join us today. Uh, again, we've had a lot of fun. It's hard not to drinking all this nice wine and being with friends. With your friends. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so we look forward to sharing wine with you in the future here in the tasting room or again, maybe, maybe next Monday when we do uh, In the Cellar with Ken Hardcastle. Every Monday, four o'clock, one way or another, oh, we'll find yeah. our way here and uh, Someday we'll actually tell you what we're going to talk about beforehand. <laughs> Try it if you get good at that. That'll be a good So thank you again. Have a great Thanks evening. We'll look forward to seeing you next Monday at four o'clock. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everyone. Happy New Year.